Cuphead, for a character who hasn't been around a very long time, at least not in the greater public eye, gosh oh golly has Cuphead sure made an impact on the internet. Endless amounts of praise have been balanced by endless amounts of salty tears, and while the debate of difficulty versus inclusiveness rages on in the background, I can't help but feel that one very important thing has been left on the sidelines, the brilliance of Cuphead as a character. And so, it is this little cup and his brother Mugman that we are going to be looking at a bit deeper today on Character Study. The tale of Cuphead begins on Inkwell Isle, where Cuphead and his brother live under the care of the Elder Kettle. These two are just a pair of happy-go-lucky sentient dishware, until they blunder themselves into the Devil's, yes, Satan himself's casino. By making a wrong bet, the two owe their souls to the Devil, but quickly strike a deal to get them out of this by collecting on the soul contracts he holds on the other citizens of Inkwell. If they are able to collect them all, then Cuphead and Mugman are promised to free their own souls from the bind. From here, Cuphead and Mugman do as cups do, and use some magical powers granted to them by the Elder Kettle to bip bop and battle their way through Satan's tedders, and quite refreshingly, there aren't really any twists and turns along the way. Cuphead and Mugman have a monumental task in front of them, and against the odds, they triumph canonically. However, non-canonically, for the many players who are not used to the crushing difficulty of this game, they perish hundreds if not thousands of times along the way. The story of Cuphead doesn't seem like anything special, being a simple framing device to set up the action, which is a classic video game thing. However, I can't help but feel that it actually is a little bit special. Running into trouble on a biblical scale, with the devil himself being the main antagonist, is just not a theme that we see very often in video games. Sure, demonic contracts binding this or that player slash NPC are a dime a dozen in games, but not so with literally Lucifer, complete with his classic horns and pitchfork and a realm of fire from which he rules from, awaiting you at the end of the game. The joyfulness of the old-timey presentation of the whole game, combined with the incredibly high stakes of the plot, fit the 1930s aesthetic and theming to a T. Things were simpler back then, but also the danger of life and childhood were not so abstract. It wasn't just that the animation of the past was vastly more violent, it was that the way that children's stories were handled back then in general were a lot less soft than we handle them today. Forget Caillou and Thomas and give me Cuphead and Mugman any day. Speaking of our titular Cup and his brother, let's take a moment to talk about personality. The brothers Cuphead and Mugman don't have a ton of character to grasp onto, but there are some definite traits to speak of. Cuphead seems to be the more impulsive one of the pair, with him being the one who foolishly puts both of their souls at risk for one more gamble at the Devil's Casino. Mugman, on the other hand, while definitely foolish like his brother for having come to this casino in the first place, at the very least has a little bit more sense, with him trying to stop Cuphead from making the bet that got them into all of the trouble in the first place. Almost every image that we are presented with in the story scenes of the game tends to reinforce both of the brothers' characters. Cuphead, being the titular character, is always the one in the lead, with Mugman in tow. Even in the game's ending, where they are both on stage to announce that all of the citizens they just finished walloping are free from their soul debts, for which, by the way, they are canonically equally responsible for, Cuphead still appears to be in the lead, loving the attention that they're getting from the crowd, while Mugman shyly stands a little bit less prominently to the side. The brother dynamic of these two has has an obvious parallel to the most famous brotherly duo in gaming, Mario and Luigi. We have the brash leader and the timid hanger-on. While there are a lot of other Mario references in the game, most notably in the run and gun stage Funfair Fever, this one is a little bit more subtle. However, not all of the references in the creations of these characters is nearly as subdued, which we will examine next by looking at their visual design.
Cuphead and Mugman could hardly be more simple visually, yet there is just something about them that seems familiar and welcoming. At face value, they're nothing more than a cup and a straw with a black shirt, white gloves, and matching shorts and shoes to go along with it. But in this case, fittingly, the devil is in the details. Just like with their personality, Cuphead and Mugman's visual design is mainly an homage to prior culture, with their designs both being a very obvious nod to the Disney mascot himself, Mickey Mouse. The black body, puffy gloves and shoes, and for Cuphead, even the color scheme and oval button nose match Mr. Mouse here without a question. There is, of course, the whole rubbery noodliness to Cuphead and Mugman's animations, which comes straight out of Steamboat Willie era animation. Also, you may have noticed that from time to time in the game, for example on the victory screen, Cuphead and Mugman's gloves appear to be yellow temporarily, which again is a nod to Mickey Mouse. In Mickey Mouse's first appearance in color, in the 1935 short Mickey's Garden, his iconic gloves were yellow, not white. They were only changed to white in the following year, and then remained consistently that color ever since. In a way, this strong visual referencing to one of the most prominent animated characters in the world both works for and against the game. For one thing, it makes Cuphead and Mugman instantly likable, built upon the extremely controlled image of wonder and happiness that Disney has built up over the past near century. On the other hand, upon re-examination and realization of these two basically being Mickey Mouse clones, it leaves me wondering what kind of original protagonist that Studio MDHR could have created. It is certainly shown through the rest of the encounters of the game that they have a masterful grasp on character design. Other recent platformers, such as Shovel Knight, have also been built upon heavy nostalgia, yet still managed to bring us new heroes who were original and immediately classic. It's a fun thought experiment to turn over in our heads for a little bit, but at the end of the day, Cuphead is a throwback to not just a style, but a very specific moment in time in animation. They wanted to set their protagonist against the devil himself, and who better to set against him than the most iconic face of childhood joy in the world? It really is no wonder why the brothers come from Mickey, but that leaves the question, why did they choose a cup and not just another anthropomorphic animal? The story for that goes that the creators were inspired from a 1936 Japanese propaganda film, where a man with a teacup for a head turns into a tank. It's such a bizarre concept that it kind of goes back around to being brilliant again. This cuphead turns into a tank, and cuphead and mugman turn into a plane, so whatever, just go with it. Cuphead, Mugman, and their game, since its release on September 29th, 2017, have made a huge splash on the gaming community. Landing at just the right time in the year, which is after the summer releases but before the fall slash winter glut of more big titles, it managed to, in just two weeks, sell over one million copies, something which is pretty unheard of in indie releases. Even if you hadn't been following Cuphead's seven year development process, which included many, many delays, suddenly Cuphead was everywhere. especially especially on YouTube. As cliched and hacky as it is to compare Cuphead to Dark Souls, I think there is one similarity that can't be denied, and that is the way that Cuphead spread virally due to the gameplay's main gimmick, which was crushing difficulty. Here was a game with a visually fascinating throwback art style, sporting a surprisingly dark story, and two peppy, oddly familiar looking protagonists. This unlikely game was the one that was sure to test your gaming skills down to the very core, and obviously it's not every day that something like like this comes along. So it's no wonder that Cuphead has seen such a meteoric skyrocket of popularity. This naughty little cup and his brother have become instant indie giants, and many are already awaiting a sequel to the game, which at this point is another sure success if it happens. While upon closer inspection, Cuphead and Mugman reveal themselves to be mainly a hodgepodge of different parts that have been combined to make the perfect indie throwback protagonists, there is still just so much to love about them. Like the game itself, what's most amazing here isn't innovation but the quality of replication. We are endeared to these two because we already know them by their inspirations from before we pick up the controller, and thus we want to see them overcome the overwhelming odds they're stacked against. Through many trials in which we inevitably fail time and time again, we always come back to see these two succeed. There is a timeless quality to Cuphead and Mugman and their game, and these two characters are, without a doubt, a cup of something special indeed.
Thank you for watching this video, which looks a little bit deeper into Cuphead and Mugman. I've been obsessed with their game for the past couple weeks, and I knew I had to make a video on them as soon as I finally managed to beat it. In the comments below, why not let me know about your experiences with Cuphead? Also, please let me know what other characters and media that you'd like to see covered on Character Study. It's been a while since I've been able to make another video like this, and I hope to intersperse them more into my channel releases. Also, if you came to my channel after seeing my Butters Character Study video, which has really blown up lately, besides telling me to cover Cartman next for the hundredth time, why not suggest someone from a different franchise that you'd like to see? You know, we all gotta branch out sometimes. Anyways, I look forward to seeing your responses below. Until next time everybody, this has been Gamesbrained, and I hope you take care.